it's hump day. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Welcome. Are you excited, Neil? I am so excited. He can't stand it because he gets it's hump pork day. chops for dinner. Oh, I love pork chops. <laughs> well, kind of a pork choppy thing. And uh, my name is George Gary, and I am welcoming you. I know we've got new watchers and listeners. I say listeners, but watchers, because I've been doing a lot of morning shows across the country, and yesterday I did one in... Uh, where was that? Was it, uh, was Kentucky. It, it was uh, not Louisville. Louisville, I did. No, it was Nashville. Nashville. Nashville Tennessee. in the morning. Yeah, Tennessee. Eh, it's over there. It's all you're, you're so you're so a continental. You can't remember where you're at. Well, what was rough yesterday is I got up at six in the morning and had done stuff for here the night before, and then I had to run around and uh, get it ready for six o'clock a.m. because it's. A different time over there. Then I did a radio show for a half hour, which radio shows, I like 10 minutes. One night, WGN was 30, 45 minutes. So they, they don't have much to talk about, so they have me on. Anyway, we've got um, a uh, two beet ginger soup, and these beets came from my farm, uh, to, farm Fresh to You box that I've told you guys about. And I love it because I get a lot of different things. I'm watching things. And I also have uh, pork piccata. It's almost like chicken piccata, but it's got some blue cheese in it also, just a little bit. So what I did, I did this ahead because this takes an hour. And here is our, um, our beets. This is a regular beet that you guys are used to. And then they had yellow beets. They only had, they sent me two little ones, but I used what I could because I want to make a, a two, um, two colors in the bowl. I'm gonna blend these separately. All you do, and you saw the foil in the center, I take it, I peel it. I've seen a lot of people bake them completely and then peel it, and it's a mess. So I just peel it like a, an apple. It does get red all over the place, so if you have kids, you can say, look, I cut my finger, and then they'll freak out. <laughs> it, I mean, it's such a ruby red that if you had that color blood, you got problems. And then, um, I separated this so I didn't get the red all over it on the, the yellow beet. Because, because the yellow beet is lighter in color, I'll blend that one first, and then the second one I'll do the red. Now, I won't do all of these beets because I'm going to make one serving. I'm going to uh, improvise my serving here. Now, I've also got lemon juice. Uh, I almost said garlic again. The other day I called this garlic. Ginger, and we're going to chop ginger up and mince it. And then in here was, uh, and I'm making it, making it boil, uh, stock that I made. Remember when we did the chicken two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago? I made stock and I'm still using it. I made tortilla soup out of it. How I, long does stock last? About three weeks. Okay, yeah. so it's on its last leg. It's, it's You're pretty making close. one serving of soup. So in case I'm not here tomorrow, don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever fed you anything? You no, are the normal. I'm the one that takes you... chances. I was traveling. I like risk. Yeah. No, Neil feels. If the... Oh, I should. Oh, okay. I bought. I'm going to show you this guy. No, I can't. It's gone. I bought a um, some crumbled blue cheese. And I tell you guys not to, but I only need a little bit for something. And I saw it in the back of the fridge today. And I saw that it said it's good for another at least six weeks. I opened this up and it was growing mold all the way on top. And what's funny about Neil is he feels if the date says it, it's good. Now I look at it this way. I wish we did what they do in Europe. Put the date that things were made. Like chicken lays their eggs. They put the little stamp on each egg the day it was laid. And you in your mind can decide when it's good or bad. For instance, let's say my next door neighbor, Jen, and I go to the store together, and we both buy a gallon of milk. Now, they both have the same date on it, right? But what's wrong is of expiration. But it will, it will, go, it will go bad if I have it sitting out. Nobody knows how they sit, keep it sitting out. So that's why I really wish we would change the way we do it, but we don't. So you normally taste things, you look at it, you smell it. Here's our, I need this in a pourable container. So that's where Neil will feel that, oh, it's fine. If it, the date says it, it's good. So it's one, not true. It is true. 
One time, I wish I could find that picture. That looks disgusting. I'm not going to eat it. Well, no, but you still think, you have an iron stomach. That one time, I was traveling, and I said to him, Neil, I don't want to find you next to the refrigerator, uh, you know, passed out. Well, the next picture he sends me is he's laying down like this. (laughs) See, that's what keeps it going. You're, you're, You're gone, and you start laughing at this stuff, so... So anyway, there's our stock. Let's get back to our recipe and not Neil eating bad food. And um, I have learned over this that I do eat um, leftovers a little bit more than I normally do. Yeah. Because normally I, I can't don't like stand. to waste food. I don't like leftovers. So we're gonna. Oh, I always tell you to put liquid in first, but this is really hot. So. Whoops. Whoop. Whoop. See, glad I'm not a doctor. Whoop. Goes all over the place. And you can put some garlic in this if you want, but we have just ginger. So I'm gonna do the yellow, and see, the roasted. It takes one hour. All you do is put a little bit of olive oil on it, and, uh, I wanna sneeze. A little olive oil and salt and pepper. So let me get a little bit of lemon juice. I'm not gonna do the whole thing of lemon juice because I'm only doing a, this is a hard lemon. We go. I showed you yesterday how to peel the garlic. Peel the garlic. Oh, the uh, <laughs> ginger. You called it garlic too uh-huh. yesterday. I did. Ginger. And I'm gonna just peel that down a little bit, and then I will uh, take a little piece of it, and I tell you uh, one tablespoon minced. So I'm just gonna take a little piece and mince it up a little bit just a few pieces in there it will grind down in there but it's easier to help it at the beginning so we're going to take that and throw this in and i'm going to look at the kind of the texture of this keep in mind i'm only making one serving If it's too thick like it is right now, it looks, looking at it right now, oh, it smells really good. It looks like um, oatmeal, that texture. So I'm gonna add more liquid to it. I want both of them to be about the same consistency. Okay, you wanna show in there while I get another horrible container? container because it's best to have things that you can pour this working with it so let me pour this in now I'll do the red one the reason why like I said if I did the red one first it would be hard to get all of it out here's my little rubber spatula look there it is the red's a stronger color so it'll you won't have to wash this down. So there's the first one. And now the red one. You can rinse it off. Let me rinse it off a little bit. That light's not on. I can't see. Now it's on. Now it's rinsed. Now with that stock being hot and the beets being warm, you don't have to really microwave or warm it up I'm just gonna put all these things in here and you taste it for salt and pepper. A little bit more citrus. We'll put stock. Those are some herbs that are floating in that. Put another piece. And then I'm trying to make about the same size serving here. So about two spoonfuls. Then the rest we'll eat as a side dish. So I don't know, I, we were talking the other day about uh, beets. Kids don't eat them. I, I didn't eat them as a kid. And they're so bright and sweet in flavor and color to where kids love the colorful ice creams. I just wonder why they don't like the colorful uh, beets because they are so vibrant. So here's our second soup. And we let it go like that to where it's a paste. And then we check 
our consistency. Like I said, we want the consistency to be the same. And that is it. So let me put this in the bowl. That red is so beautiful. I was looking for a different soup bowl, and this is the best I could. I wanted it clear, and I don't know where the one that I like is. The reason why I want this clear is because it is, okay, that's a little too mushy. Let me get some more liquid. I like thick soups. Oh no. Let me whisk that a little bit. She's, uh, she's been ornery today. Did you know that? <laughs> Her? Yeah. Okay, that's about right. So we're going to do one soup, and then we will do This is a little thick too. It thickens up as it sits too, so make sure you have some extra stock close by. And I'll pour the second one right next to it. It looks like you got two like that. Just like that. Then let me get some sour cream. <laughs> I normally have the sour cream. Oh, the way. There we go. Yes, I buy the large thing of sour cream. <laughs> I go through sour cream a lot. So, how's the color on that? Does it look? It looks pretty, yeah. Okay. And there we go. So, there is our two beet soup. We'll be back to do our pork next to finish up our two things. We'll be right back. And we're back with pork piccata. How'd you like the two beet soup? Neil hasn't tasted it yet. Did you taste it? You didn't no, taste it yet. It looks beautiful. Feels ready. I'm ready. It smelled really good. So we're gonna take a little bit of butter and oil and put it together in the pan. And the reason why we use butter and oil together is because butter by itself will brown too quickly and the oil by itself has no flavor. So or, or canola. But I did use olive. No, I use canola. So I've got to let that warm up. Meanwhile. Remember our pork loin roast that we kept doing? I'd buy that size. This is what it is. It's cut into pieces to make pork chops without the bone. So it's the same thing, and you uh, can have a lot more uh, uses for it. Uh, one of those pork loins would do two, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. So we've got salt and pepper and flour, and we dried those, and we're going to... Put flour on both sides, the flour in a pan like this, and then we are going to do about, let's see, how many minutes do I tell you on each side? Four to six on each side. So, and then we will take them off of the pan and use a clean pan, uh, plate. And that we don't use again. Raw meat, I know it's normally chicken you worry about, but any raw meat, I don't want you to use the stuff from it. I'll use. So when those are done, we're going to put, oh, I didn't get any of my tools out. Ah. Okay, I'm back. All right, we've got uh, some more stock, last day for it, <laughs> salt and pepper. We've got capers, and we have lemon juice, fresh lemons, and then we've got some blue cheese from uh, uh, the uh, Point Reyes blue. I still have some left. And we uh, go about four to six minutes on each side, and then we'll, we'll uh, put them on a plate, and with that, we'll make the sauce that goes on top and then throw them back in. So it's really simple to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. 
Uh, in fact, I think these are faster than some of those TV dinners. You know the worst TV dinners? What are the worst? I, they might be a sponsor one day. <laughs> Don't ever bad enough anything, right? It's that lady that made pies. Marie. Oh, Marie. Oh, Marie I like Calvary. their teeny dip. They're teeny good, dinners. but you have to do too much. Oh. I would think if you're going to do a TV dinner, yeah, you, you can't throw it pop in. one thing in no. at one time. You have to undo part of it, stir it halfway through, then you have to turn it over. Well, that's and what makes it taste better. Do you know why TV dinners were invented? And what was the first TV dinner? I don't. It was turkey. There was something with uh, uh, Swanson is the one that started it. They had a lot of turkey, so they thought, oh, we'll do this dinner in the 50s. So that's who invented TV dinners. And turkey was the first one. It was television, right? People could put them on yeah, the TV trays there. and yeah, watch it looked like a TV television. Because they had little knobs yeah. in the packaging. We didn't eat TV dinners, really. I had one TV dinner when I was a kid. Yeah. When my sister was born and my dad cooked, we went to the grocery store. And I remember I pointed to the colorful box, and that's what we ordered. And I remember I thought it was going to look like that when we took the lid off, because it was all tin foil, and oh, it yeah. was all jumbled together. And it was all brown. And it didn't look and, anything and like that. And nothing like the box. No. No. In fact, that's the thing. There, there's, you know, I know and I've done food styling before, but product food styling is fascinating because... Okay, like let's say a McDonald's hamburger or a quarter pounder or you know Big Mac. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Big Mac. You know, it looks smashed and all, but uh, in reality, that's what it looks like. But then on camera, it's beautiful and puffed right. up and everything. But yeah, and don't they put the the lettuce on up, on first and in the, in the ads? Oh, in the ads, it look yeah, it looks like the lettuce is there first. And mm -hmm. well, they didn't have lettuce on some of those burgers. Yeah. So anyway, we've got that going. So when your sister was born, you got a TV dinner. That was the last time. I know, it was like when my five. sister was born, Dad took my older sister and I to go see the Shaggy Dog. And we could have all the candy we wanted, and we had to hold our head outside the uh, car on the way home. Oh, you were getting sick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, still remember. Oh, it was a Disney. So Dad's <laughs> let you get away with things when Mom's in the hospital delivering. Yeah. <laughs> and that was back when women stayed in the hospital, right? Well, yeah, we, I don't think we no, saw I think mom they for a week. an hour after you birth and you're yes. out. Bam, there you go. Mm -hmm. They're hardier now, these women. I guess so, <laughs> they are. Uh, women so, have always been hardy. So, w go ahead and do a close up because the butter is browning around the edges. You can see. The, the, um, and we got, let me pick that up, see? not brown all the way, but it's getting there. Okay, and it's still pretty pink. Yep. And you want to, uh, I can set about six minutes on each side. So uh, that, we could stand here and wait. We could tell another story. Or we can be right back. We'll be right back. Okay, our pork chops are done. Put foil on it. Keep that going. Take your stock. stock. Cook that a little bit with our capers. Just gonna warm this all up. And our lemon juice. And then we served this on the World Cruise a couple of years ago. And we're gonna Stir that up a little bit just to make sure we get all the bits from the below. Like that. And then we're going to add just a little bit of the uh, blue cheese. And you don't put any cornstarch in this to thicken it up. No, it's not a thick, thickened mixture. It's kind of runny. Okay. A little bit. See how the blue cheese like melts a little bit? It's just gonna give us an essence of blue cheese. Just like that. And then we'll put these back in here. And you can hold these. You can throw them in the oven at this point. You can turn it off and tent it. And we've got our 
little bit of sauce we pour on top and we serve it. And there is our piccata. You got a close up of this already, didn't you? Not with the blue cheese on it. Wow, doesn't that smell good? Mm -hmm, it does. And there you go. So Beautiful. we will serve this up with our soup in just a bit. We'll be right back. We have our pork piccata and our double soup of double soup. Well, you look at it and you've got both beets. So double beet soup with some ginger. Neil already tasted it and it's Neil approved, so it must be good. And the pork you can do ahead of time and put it in a, a, a big serving uh, dish and keep it in the oven to warm it up at 200 degrees you'll be fine use an internal temperature to make sure it reaches 165 and then you'll know it's done so because you never know with the thickness we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you not tomorrow yes kind of tomorrow it's not going to be a full show in here it's going to be my uh cheesecake show from wgm but i'll uh, come in and introduce it to start with so thanks a lot take care and we'll see you soon bye